Hi, I'm Stefan from XM Distribution and within this how-to video I will show you how to set up your Cumbria FTC cluster farm. That is done with the so-called cluster manager. Here at my laptop I'm connected to our demo farm where we have three machines in a virtual environment. The cluster manager has multiple tabs. In the fourth tab it's all about the machines, so the actual farm setup. Our farm consists from three active machines and some passive ones. So the ones with the green bubble in front, they are all online. So these are the ones that are currently available. The red one is a laptop that is currently turned off and for that reason it's offline. And the, fourth, the following ones, the cold standbys with the blue bubble, they are all not part of our farm anymore. The first setting to do is to select the machine's priority. By default, they are all on the same priority, but we want our farm manager to take jobs on last. The farm manager transcodes as all the other machines in the farm, but we want the farm nodes to get load first and then as last the farm manager. That is also very applicable when your farm manager, for instance, is on a lower spec than your farm rendering machines. It's the same here in our case. Our farm manager has 12 cores and the farm nodes 24. <coughs> Another important setting is the number of slots. The slots define how many concurrent transcoding jobs you have per machine. As you can see here, we have defined that the farm manager never takes a job and the other machines take 10 jobs. But when we have a closer look, look we will see that the use dynamic slots option is activated. And that means it takes up to 10 jobs, but it takes less if less jobs are completely loading the machine. So to give you an example, you transcode, for instance, to MXF XDCAM HD, and that is a format where you run multiple times real time with just, let's say, four cores. And Obviously, on such a machine as we have it here, you can easily run, for instance, like five, six, seven jobs in parallel. On the other hand, in next moment, you transcode to an adaptive bitrate format with, let's say, seven renditions, so many, many bitrates. And they are a more complex codec because typically you have H.264 or H.265 HEVC. Typically, one job is completely loading the complete machine. And with the use dynamic slots option, it's make sure that your machine is never overloaded. On a right mouse click, we have various options where we can say, I want to do a remote desktop to that machine. I can reboot the complete machine. I can remove it from the list or I can reset the counters. I can disconnect it from the cluster um, and so on. So what is this good for? Removing a machine from the list simply means when it's not around anymore, for instance, like we have it here with this old machine, I can say, okay, it's not existing anymore. I want to remove it from the list and it will never come back. Just as a side factor, a fun factor, when you do that with an existing machine that is really running and you remove it, you will see it to come back automatically in a moment. Under a certain condition, that is that you allow it to make a broadcast, so it's broadcasting out to the farm manager. As we see here, it's not automatically coming back online because we have not allowed that. I need to show you how this is done. Here in the settings, in the options, we have an option that says automatically connect new machines to the cluster. If I do activate that, you will see that they come immediately online. If it's this deactivated, they will not come immediately online. So in that case, I need to do that manually by pressing the connect machine to cluster option. And then in a moment, yeah, it comes online. I can sort them again by name and it looks all as it was before. Yeah, the tags are an interesting function. The idea here is that, for instance, you don't license all the codecs for all your machines. Think about you need a license for Dolby E encoding. It's not expensive, but it's a price point to it. But you have not that many files to transcode to Dolby E. You probably have just one machine that can Dolby, do Dolby E. And for that reason, you simply give it a name. 
equal b e. And the same tag is given to the presets in your watch folder setup or in your API calls or in your manual way to queue jobs to the transcoding farm. And that makes sure that all the Dolby E targets are immediately um, assigned to that machine that can do Dolby E encoding. The fifth step is about the farm redundancy. So the idea is that we have a pair of machines that are managing the farm. And all we need to do is we need to tell this both machines who is the primary and who is the backup. That's fairly easy. There's a configuration dialog that opens up. By default, it's in the status no backup. So it's a single farm manager for that farm. We can switch that and can say, OK, this farm manager shall become the primary. And all we need to put in is the IP address of the secondary or backup farm manager. And on the backup farm manager, we do the exact same. We select this to become the backup and put in the IP address of the primary. What happens afterwards is that the backup will stop its operation of managing a farm and the primary will replicate its internal database to the backup farm manager. In that database, all the configuration information is stored and all the runtime information. And that way, the backup has always a database available that equals the current last second setup and runtime information of our farm. But the backup is not managing the farm that very moment. It's just passively looking to the primary, so it's a heartbeat connection, whether the primary still does its job. And that very moment when it cannot find it anymore, so it's crashed because of the server is gone, the operating system is gone, the software has a problem, the network has a problem or whatsoever, then the backup farm manager is taking over the operations by taking over the database and starting managing the farm nodes. Yeah, so here I would press apply and then it tries now to apply that settings to that farm. My backup is not configured this very moment and for that reason that will not work completely. But if you do that in your environment, you will see that they now start to exchange the database. So you get an information database is down that very moment and then the database comes up again. So this as a first insight into how to operate your Cumbria FTC farm. Thank you so much for watching.